Coming up on today's Airborne, signed, sealed, and delivered. The Small Airplane Revitalization Act is law. The FAA is expected to issue a GE NXAD this week, and the Technam P2008JC, equipped with Garmin G3X, receives EASA approval. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Legislation designed to reduce the cost and complexity of doing business in the general aviation world is now law, but it will take some time to determine if the benefits of the law will be lost in a government bureaucratic sinkhole. The legislation requires the FAA to implement the recommendations of the FAA's Part 23 Reorganization Aviation Rulemaking Committee by December 31st of 2015. Recommendations focus on increasing safety and reducing government and industry certification costs for light general aviation airplanes. Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce said, quote, The tremendous support this law enjoyed in Congress and the speed with which it moved through the legislative process demonstrates a bipartisan commitment to safety, as well as a recognition that the FAA's overly bureaucratic, outdated, and prescriptive regulations must change, end quote. Congressman Pompeo, the author of the Small Airplane Revitalization Act, said, quote, this law unleashes small airplane manufacturers to do what they do best, build planes and get them in the air, end quote. NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin said that, quote, streamlining the certification process for general aviation manufacturers while preserving important safety requirements will lead to swifter adoption of new aircraft designs and vital safety equipment benefiting everyone from pilots and their passengers to manufacturers." End quote. According to a new study, a second phase in the development of the very light jet market is about to get underway. Tom Patton reports. The report, the fifth in a series of focused studies on this sector that consultant PMI Media has published since 2006, examines the re-emergent VLJ market. Demand for these aircraft collapsed with the banking crisis of 2008, but recent years have seen two established manufacturers develop a successful line of mature programs. By the end of 2013, the study predicts that more than 1,000 VLJs will have been delivered and that 1,700 aircraft of this type will be delivered in the next seven years. New models recently entering the market include the Honda Jet and the Eclipse EA550. One of the major changes to the market over the coming years, according to the report, will be the demand for new VLJs from customers in the Middle East and Far East, while the VLJ sales to aircraft operators in Latin America will fall from the current 21% of global demand to 15% by 2019 behind Europe. Philip Butterworth Hayes, the report's author, says he believes that, quote, affordable jets can capture some share of the general aviation market but says it will take longer than originally predicted. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The FAA is expected to issue an airworthiness directive this week, which will warn airlines flying certain Dreamliner models that are powered by GE NX engines, as well as all 747-8 airplanes, to avoid flying near towering thunderstorms. There have been several reports of ice building up behind the first compressor fan of the engine in such conditions. And the ingested ice has led to a temporary reduction of power in the engines. While none of the affected engines have stopped operating and all flights have landed safely, the FAA said it would be taking the interim action to make sure pilots avoid icing conditions that could affect engine power and possibly damage the engine. The FAA says it is working closely with Boeing and GE to develop a permanent solution. Boeing said late last week that it hopes the problems can be resolved through updated control and engine software. Technam's P2008JC, equipped with Garmin's G3X, has received EASA approval for certification specifications for very light aeroplanes day and night VFR operation. The TACNAM P2008JC is a European type certified CS VLA aircraft, which offers seating for two and is popular as a flight trainer. 
The certification of the G3X and the P2000JC offers pilots a 7-inch dual-screen layout. The dual-screen G3X offers both primary and multifunction with attitude and directional guidance, along with electronic engine gauges and terrain obstacle alerting. The engine indicating system allows fuel and systems data to be monitored on the G3X display. Accompanying the dual G3X display are both the GNC 255 NAVCOM radio and the GTX 328 transponder, ensuring operators are well equipped for the single European Sky initiative. The GTX 328 also complies with the MODES elementary surveillance mandate in Europe. While this new Technam is certified in Europe only, Garmin says it brings the G3X's capabilities to certain U.S. type certificated aircraft, as well as U.S. experimental and light sport aircraft. Diamond Share, the innovative new aviation access program, has placed aircraft at three new locations and indicated they only have one membership position remaining at each due to the popularity of the program. Under the program, costs are shared by two or three members who pay a fixed monthly membership as their cost share to fly the plane. This program helps members offset their overall investment costs and allows them to access brand new aircraft with state-of-the-art technology via a fixed budget, all without the complications of shared equity partnership or costly managed fractional programs. Each location has new Diamond DA40 XLT models with all the latest advancements and features, including G1000 flight decks with synthetic vision, digital autopilots with precision WAS approach. Each aircraft is shared among a small exclusive group of users, providing exceptional access and flexible use. An 18-year-old Minnesota man who reportedly taught himself to fly has pleaded guilty in Rousseau County Court to using an airplane without the owner's permission over the past summer and fall. Jeffrey Biteman does not hold a pilot certificate of any kind, yet he reportedly managed to fly a Cessna 150 from Rousseau to multiple airports in Minnesota and North Dakota over the summer. Biteman was charged with felony theft of a motor vehicle and unauthorized use of an aircraft. He has pleaded guilty to both counts. The Cessna reportedly belongs to a serviceman who is on active duty with the Air Force in Afghanistan. Biden was caught when another pilot became suspicious of his activities and contacted authorities after seeing the plane at the Russo Airport. When he was arrested on October 22nd, Biden confirmed that he did not have a pilot's license or permission to use the plane. He did say he was an aviation mechanics student. A deal for the U.S. Air Force to purchase 112 military rescue helicopters from Sikorsky is contingent on the program surviving military budget cuts. Sikorsky will build the combat rescue helicopters, referred to as the CRH, only if they are funded by Congress, and the Air Force has reportedly said that the program is not a top priority. Air Force spokeswoman Erica Yepsen said in a statement, quote, The award is contingent on the outcome of the president's budget review process, where CRH would need to be funded across the future year's defense program, end quote. Sikorsky provided the only acceptable bid for the replacement of the fleet of aging H-860 Pave Hawk helicopters currently in use. The service had originally selected Boeing's H-47 Chinook for the program, but that $15 billion contract was canceled after multiple protests from other manufacturers in 2009. If the contract proceeds, it would be worth $6.8 billion to Sikorsky. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. 
with standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform. The FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www.aerosport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or a podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero news.net. Pan American World Airways, the principal and largest international air carrier in the world, ceased operations on December 4th of 1991 but past employees remember the glory days. Former employees of Pan Am will gather in Miami, Florida on December 7th for a reunion being held at their old headquarters on the Miami International Airport. Currently, the corporate offices of Pan Am International Flight Academy, the surviving training division of the airline. The building is a favorite of the reunion group as it still prominently displays the large airline logo on its exterior. It has a stunning two-story lobby with large murals and displays of Pan Am in its glory days, and houses a Pan Am memorabilia shop located on the mezzanine level. Moon Express, a commercial lunar enterprise, conducted a successful free flight test of its lunar lander software on NASA's Mighty Eagle prototype robotic lander. The free flight test concluded last Tuesday and was the latest in a series of progressive tests of the company's flight software being conducted in collaboration with the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. The collaboration is helping Moon Express develop its commercial lunar landers for low-cost robotic missions to the moon beginning in 2015. Under the terms of a reimbursable Space Act agreement signed with Moon Express, NASA Marshall is providing its Mighty Eagle lander test vehicle and engineering team in support of a series of test flights. In return, Moon Express is reimbursing NASA Marshall Space Flight Center for the cost of providing the test vehicle and technical support. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. Today's AVW shows the beauty of this 1929 biplane departing into the sunset. This specially designed biplane actually carries four people in the front cockpit. Search 1929 New Standard Departs in YouTube. If you're about to sign on the dotted line for a new Instrum helicopter, but just can't put your finger on how you want your new bird to look, Instrum has a solution. Rather than hire a graphic artist to design your livery, Instrum now gives you the configurator. You just click on a helicopter model, choose a base color, and then choose an accent color. You also have a variety of stripe options to choose from. Instrum says that customers are not limited to these aviation designs or colors, and they can create custom designs for you as well. Enstrom says they design helicopters for breast cancer awareness, Halloween, and deer hunting. Customers can let their imagination run wild. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again this Friday for a new edition of Airborne. 
I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.